Hi everybody, my name is Sean O'Kane with Chip Estimate TV, where we bring you the latest trends and information in semiconductor chip design and IP. My guest today is Navraj Nandra, Senior Marketing Director for Analog Mix Signal. That's right, Sean. It's yeah. synopsis right here. Uh, so now, uh, it's analog mix signal IP. That's right. Yeah. I just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Navraj also writes a blog for Synopsis, uh, talking about the trends and challenges designers mm -hmm. um, actually come across uh, specific to physical IP. Today we're going to talk about something even more important, and that is the release of the new DDR4 mm -hmm. with Synopsis. So let's take a walk, and maybe we can chat a little bit about and how important that is. Yeah. To designers and your customers. I'd be happy to. Okay. Great. So, in a nutshell, what is DDR4? Well, in a nutshell, Sean, it's the latest uh, JEDEC specification mm -hmm. that defines uh, the uh, next generation of commodity DRAMs mm -hmm. after DDR3. Um, principally, it's going to be used in uh, PCs and laptops, mm -hmm. but over time, you'll see it uh, appearing in embedded applications as the um, cost and volume drives the price of DDR4 cheaper. Okay. And then finally, um, what we're going to see is that DDR4 will be actually cheaper than the uh, mobile SDRAMs. And uh, this means that uh, it'll be cheaper than things like uh, LPDDR2, LPDDR3, and uh, wide IO. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's cool stuff. Now, how is the DDR3 to DDR4 conversion compare to the previous DDR2 to 3? Hmm. How is that transition? Yeah. A little different. That's a, that's a very good question, uh -huh. uh, Sean. Um, so essentially, first thing to remember, it's actually a, a more complex transition. Uh -huh. And what we saw in the days of DDR3 when that was announced mm -hmm. was that um, you had a concept called write leveling, which was something unique. Mm -hmm. And write leveling allowed uh, what they know, what, what's called as a flyby routing. Mm -hmm. um, DDR3 also um, had some ability to lower the power consumption. Um, because the core of the DRAM uh, hasn't changed in speed, the prefetch had to be increased to 8 from 4, from DDR2 to DDR3. So those were the sort of transitions from DDR2 to DDR3. Now, <laughs> with DDR4, yes. there are a lot more uh, um, features that have been implemented. You have features like bank groups, you have features like uh, cycle redundancy codes, uh -huh. you have things like write uh, references, um, you have uh, pseudo drain outputs, um, so a number of uh, you know, new features have been added to uh, DDR4. From a user perspective, right. uh, there are you know, certain complexities um, that you need to consider. For example, the signal integrity uh, environment. Mm -hmm. And also with the uh, bank grouping that I mentioned, um, this actually for embedded applications. Uh, what you need to do in DDR4 mm -hmm. is have the ability to uh, manage uh, the bank groups through a technique called ping-ponging, um, which is a technique that you know, is new to DDR4. Yeah. So, you know, some fantastic improvements with DDR4, but also, you know, some, some changes and challenges to the designers. So, with the increased uh, demands and mobile applications for features and power and, and, and such, how is that going to affect, or well, how, how are customers going to be able to use DDR4 with, with those demands? Right, so actually uh, some of the customer benefits uh, include higher data rates, uh -huh. so that's, that's, that's very um, important. Mm -hmm. The other uh, interesting aspect to this is that the power consumption is going to be lower because the DRAM voltage is lower, mm -hmm. so it's faster, low in power consumption. Right. And cost, eventually when these things hit volume, when the SDRAMs hit, hit volume, they'll be actually cheaper than the DDR3 SD. Um, DDR3 SDRAM, so mm -hmm. um, those are the three kind of major uh, benefits. Um, but also, you know, you, you do have challenges in terms of uh, flip chip packaging mm -hmm. um, and some of the signal integrity uh, effects that I mentioned earlier. Now, Raj, what do you think of the common misconceptions of uh, DDR4? There are a couple, Sean. Uh, the first one is related to the speed. Mm -hmm. So the first release of the specification is 2400 megabits per second. Uh -huh. um, but there is uh, a thought out there that it should be 3200 megabits per second. Mm -hmm. And I think eventually, you know, that speed will be achieved, uh, mostly through technological advances in the uh, DRAM technology when they move to finer line geometries. Right. Um, so that's the main um, sort of um, misconception. Um, Actually, if you saw, if, if, if you've tracked historically, mm -hmm. you know, the releases of DDR, um, you'll see that the initial release of the newest generation mm -hmm. has always been at a slightly slower speed, and over time the speed has increased. Right. So, well, you know, common question would be, uh, many engineers are always thinking ahead, and always, you know, with Moore's Law, 
What's the next generation? What's coming up next? Is there going to be a DDR5 and, and when? Actually, I think there's a very exciting question. Um, I think um, if you look at these single-ended interfaces, and mm -hmm. that's what DDR is, it's running at a very high speed. Mm -hmm. I think uh, anything above 3200 megabits per second is going to be uh, impossible from a, a package board level perspective. And um, so our thought is that um, the next speed generation really will rely on maybe a Surtis technology and maybe some innovations in packaging. And so in JEDEC, you know, mm -hmm. people are talking about uh, hybrid memory cube, for example, and that uses a stacked die approach mm -hmm. uh, where you have the Surtis technology with the memory in a stack. And in order to achieve the connections, it's done through, uh, through silicon vias. That's one, one discussion that's happening. Uh, the other discussion is actually related to wide I.O., Mm -hmm. And wide I.O. is basically a large parallel um, interface and, um, again, relies on the uh, through silicon via technology in order to achieve the um, um, you know, benefits. Talking about the new release, mm -hmm. we're here with uh, Navraj Nandra, the uh, Senior Marketing Director of Analog Mix Signal IP with Synopsys, and, uh, um, and the new release. Yeah, so great, thank you. So watch out for that. And uh, for Navraj... Uh, Nandra, my name is Sean O'Kane. We'll see you next time on another episode of Chip Estimate TV.